Hello guys, this is Code and Code, and this is the seventhly seventeenth lecture of this number theory series, and this is part two of Euler's tuition function. In part one, we have already seen, uh, we have already seen the introduction of Euler's tuition function. What is the definition of that, and how we can calculate Euler's tuition function? How we can evaluate any prime or any prime power of uh, any prime power on Illustration function. In this lecture, what we are going to do, we are going to generalize the idea of illustration function, and we are going to derive a general formula that we can apply on any number, not only primes and power of primes. So, as already explained in the previous lecture, I uh, I told you guys that illustration function is actually multiplicative function and we are going to use that property to derive the solution for a, 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 a general number any number any integer n so multiplicative property is that for any arithmetic function f x uh, it is called multiplicative if f of n cross m that is f of n into m can be evaluated as f of n into f of m where n and m are co-prime with each other basically they don't share any prime divisor so if a function follows this fact then that function is called a uh, multiplicative function and Euler's tuition function follows this since Euler's tuition function is actually a multiplicative function so if you want to look at the proof you can always google you can you can find the proof on wikipedia the the proof revolves around the uh, set theory spe uh, especially uh, ring knowledge of ring you you need to have knowledge of ring to understand the uh, proof behind the multiplicative property of illustration function so a simple google search would bring uh, uh, the paper uh, which proves Euler's tuition function is multiplicative so we are not going to talk about that so basically we know that Euler's tuition function is multiplicative now uh, we have seen okay if a function is multiplicative then we can evaluate it like this so what why this property is helpful so if f of x is multiplicative so to evaluate f of n where n you can write it down as p1 raised to the power x1 into p2 raised to the power x2 into p3 uh, raised to the power x3 dash 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 pk raised to the power x a. this is basically prime factorization of n so now i know that uh, okay f is a multiplicative function and i need to evaluate n on f so basically i have to find f of n now what i can do is that i can evaluate uh, I can evaluate all of the prime powers from the prime factorization of the number and then simply take their result and multiply them to get the result of fn reason all of the prime powers are actually co-prime with each other so what you can do you can evaluate them uh, evaluate them separately and then multiply them together to get the result of n so I can use this you can, I can evaluate this right hand side which would be equal to the left hand side the result of left hand side now uh, if I show you how useful this property is let's take a look at the divisor function d of n is actually divisor count of n basically the total number of divisors of n uh, if n has a prime factorization this one then we already know the formula which calculates us which gives us the total number of divisors of n and that is simply uh, x1 plus 1 into x2 plus 1 into x3 plus 1 dash 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 into xk plus 1 this is simple formula to calculate the number of divisors of n so d of n is equals to this one now uh, number of divisor the divisor count function is also multiplicative so to uh, to calculate d of n what i can do i can simply evaluate for each prime power i can evaluate d for each prime power uh, which prime occurs in the prime factorization of n so i can evaluate d on p1 raised to power x1 and then d on p2 raised to power x2 dash 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 
for every single prime which is uh, from prime factorization of n i can evaluate d on them and simply multiply them to get the result of n now uh, d of p1 raised to the power x1 means the number of divisors of p1 raised to the power x1 so how many divisors are there for a number which is of the form p raised to the power x uh, take an example of 5 so 5 raised to the power 4 how many divisors are there for the number 5 raised to the power 4 since all of these numbers are actually prime so 5 raised to the power 4 has 5 number of divisors why you see a uh, 5 since it's a prime so it is only divisible by power of prime power of 5 basically so 5 raised to the power 4 is divisible by 5 raised to the power 0 which is 1 basically 5 raised to the power 1 5 raised to the power 2 5 raised to the power 3 and 5 raised to the power 4 so 5 raised to the power 4 is divisible by 5 different numbers and which are 5 raised to the power 0 1 2 3 and 4 so basically if a if we have a prime raised to the power some number x to the so the total number of divisors of p raised to the power x would be x plus 1 so the result of this result of any prime raised to the power some x1 is equals to x1 plus 1 so now this d of p1 raised to the power x1 would be replaced by x1 plus 1 into d of p2 raised to the power x2 would be replaced by x2 plus 1 because it is have, having power x2 so uh, p2 raised to the power x2, x2 would have x2 plus 1 number of divisors if you replace all of them by their respective total number of divisors you will see that okay we are going we would get this exact formula so you see how we are able to uh, prove this formula using simple uh, multiplicative property of divisor function so this is how important this property is now the question is why we are even studying this because we need to find the or we have to generalize the formula for ETF so of course we are going to use multiplicative property to find the general formula for Euler station function now again we are talking about n which is having this prime factorization we already have evaluated p of phi, uh, phi of p raised to the power x in the previous lecture so result of phi of p raised to the power x is equal to p raised to the power uh, result of phi phi of p raised to the power x is equal to p raised to the power x minus 1 into p minus 1 we have already seen this in previous lecture now as phi is actually a multiplicative function so what we can do we can uh, to find phi of n what we can do we can evaluate phi on all of the prime factors of n separately and then find the result of each prime factor separately and then multiplying the whole result to get the overall result now phi of p1 raised to the power x1 we all know what this would be it would be p1 raised to the power x1 minus 1 into p minus 1 this would be for this for second the result would be p2 raised to the power x2 minus 1 into p2 minus 1 similarly for 3 p3 raised to the power x3 minus 1 into p3 minus 1 so on till k pk raised to the power xk minus 1 into pk minus 1 so you see now we are able to evaluate phi of n or, we, or basically we are able to generalize the formula for all distribution function for any general number or any integer n now this formula if you see uh, is actually quite i mean not very efficient to use when you are actually going to calculate phi of n the reason you must know all of the prime factors all of the prime divisors of n first thing second for each prime divisor you must also know the power to which it is raised or basically you must know the prime factorization of n the prime factorization of n is calculated in square root of n time first thing now after knowing the prime factorization of n i need that prime raised to the power x minus 1 first prime raised to the power x minus 1 then second prime raised to the power x minus 2 dash 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 till the kth prime since a number cannot have more than log n uh, primes so of course there won't be more than log n prime after that each prime we need to raise to some power which again either we can calculate naively 
or we can use binary exponentiation so basically this approach is going to take uh, roughly square root n into log n time uh, correct me if i'm wrong so what we can do we can actually optimize this and we can convert this formula into some formula which is much more uh, better so what i did i actually multiplied this whole expression with all of the prime uh, prime divisors of n so what i did i multiplied this whole expression by p1 and then divided by p1 multiplied with p2 divided by p2 p multiplied with p3 divided by p3 dash 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 i i am multiplying uh, i am multiplying and dividing with all of the prime factors so what to uh, prime divisor so what would happen see when i multiplied uh, the result with p1 so what would happen this would convert into p1 raised to the power x1 right when i multiplied with p2 this would convert into p2 raised to the power x2 similarly for p3 it would convert into p3 raised to the power x3 similarly for all of the prime number it would convert into pi raised to the power xi which is basically the uh, expression or prime factorization of n so all of these number combined all of these primes combined would make n since we were also dividing by all of the prime divisors so we are having uh, all of the prime divisors in the denominator this expression is actually uh, easily uh, th this expression is actually makes calculating uh, etf for a number n easy and we can calculate uh, phi of n in square root of n time using this formula so this was all for this lecture in the next lecture we'll see how we can uh, calculate actually the, in this lecture only we have seen the theoretical formula for it in the next lecture we will be implementing how we can actually calculate uh, phi of n for any general number for any integer uh, any positive integer in square root of n time so the implementation i'll be sh showing in the next video so this was all for this lecture thank you guys for watching until the next video drops keep coding thank you